More evidence that brain training can make a difference. Welcome back to Text to Nation. I'm Fred Fishkin. Joining us from Posit Science is CEO, Dr. Henry Munka. Hi, Henry. Hey, Fred. Nice to see you. Thanks for having me on. Terrific to see you once again. And you have a new study to tell us about that puts even more science behind Brain HQ. Tell us about it. Well, um, the study that has just come out that's quite exciting is a new study out of Australia. And, uh, you know, what they did was something pretty interesting. They took a multimodal approach to brain health, where they built a program that involved brain training from Brain HQ, uh, advice about diet based on the Mediterranean diet, the mind diet, which improves brain health, and advice about physical exercise, which, as we all know, is so important for brain health, and turned that into an integrated brain health intervention, and then ran a beautiful study where they uh, compared people who just got a little bit of education to people who got that education plus all this stuff to help them put that to work. And um, and uh, yeah, it just came out and we're pretty excited to talk about the results. And it can make a difference is what, the, is what we're saying here, right? That's exactly right. Henry, when they say in this study that a small amount of brain training can help to reduce dementia risk, uh, what does that mean? What, what are we talking about? Yeah, it's a great question. And um, and what's exciting about this study is that they uh, ask people to do all of these things, exercise, change their diet and brain training, and they gave them five or six months to do these. And over the course of that time, they saw that on the average, people did about 10.8 hours of brain training, almost 11 hours of brain training. And a question that you or I might have is, well, is, is that enough brain training to make a difference? And it turned out it was. Because what these researchers used was a standard measure of dementia risk called the Anu Adri that asked people questions about things they're doing in their life that are known to either increase or decrease the risk of dementia. And what they found is that in the group that was offered Brain HQ, which is to say they had something to do to really increase their cognitive engagement, that group showed a big improvement on this Anu Adri measure of dementia risk. Whereas the folks who just kind of got the handouts around, hey, how should you live a more healthy life? They didn't really change their behavior at all. And so what that tells us is that 10.8 hours of training they did, which really isn't that much, Fred, spread out over the course of five or six months, that was enough to make a real difference in, um, in this validated measure of dementia risk. And there's also another study uh, that indicates that brain training can be helpful with autism. Tell us more about that. Yeah, just the earliest first study in there. Um, and, uh, and that is an exciting result. So, you know, of course, autism, like any neurological or, or brain health disorder, you know, fundamentally, it's an issue with how the brain gets wired together. And of course, we've been building brain training programs at Brain HQ that rewire the brain. And so we were working with investigators that, um, that wanted to ask the question, well, hey, could Brain HQ training help improve cognitive function in kids with autism? And uh, that's something we've been interested in for a long time, but uh, hadn't really had the opportunity to, uh, to look into yet. So we were delighted to work with this team. They looked at about uh, 25 adolescents and young adults, all who had diagnosed with autism. And one very exciting part of this study is that uh, the first part of it actually is we just took a lot of feedback from these young people around Brain HQ. They did Brain HQ and they gave our designers a lot of advice. How could we make a brain training program that might work better uh, for young people with autism? So fantastic to partner with them and work with them on that front. And then in this first study, and Fred, you're gonna always hear me be cautious, I'm a scientist. You know, when the, the results are clear cut, you're going to hear me say they're clear cut. And when the results are new and need more, you're going to hear me say, hey, these are new and need more. But what we saw in this first study <clears throat> is that people who did the Brain HQ brain training exercises, well, first of all, they got better at the exercises themselves. And on the one hand, that's not too much of a surprise. We should get better at the things we practice at. But many scientists who've studied autism have characterized it as a, as a brain disorder where the brain is overly crystallized almost. And that's maybe what leads to some of the behavioral issues that, that people with autism have. Their brains are perhaps not as plastic or as changeable as they should be. So it was first quite interesting to see that, hey, they could do the brain training exercises. We could demonstrate that it was rewiring their brain to improve their performance at these exercises. 
But then where it got exciting is that we saw some very nice improvements on standardized measures of cognitive ability, um, particular fluency, which is a measure of how your brain can create new ideas, and certain aspects of reaction time and motor performance uh, in these young people as well. So it seemed like the improvement was helping not just their ability to do the brain training exercises, but also these generalized measures of cognitive ability. And there was also initial evidence that it was improving these behavioral measures around hyperactivity and impulsivity and inattention that they might have. Now, that's all quite exciting because if we could show in a larger study where we not only did Brain HQ, but also a control group, that we were helping these, these young people in that way, that could really start to open the door to say, hey, brain training is an intervention that could be helpful for uh, people with autism. And that would be thrilling. Really thrilling. And of course, everyday people, no matter what their age, can benefit from this. Uh, Tom Brady was a famous user of uh, Brain HQ as well. Uh, tell us more about how people can can use it. These the app is available on multiple platforms. Yeah, that, that's exactly right. You know, when we developed the Brain HQ brain training exercises, Fred, we, we developed them first and we thought, well, look, this is going to be helpful to older people who are starting to notice, you know, cognitive changes associated with aging. You know, everyone's brain starts to slow down and everyone has a slip of the tongue and everyone has a, uh, you know, starts to develop some, you know, issues around attention. So let's help those people. And the initial studies showed that in spades. But what the newer studies have shown over the past few years and the autism study and our work in sports, as you mentioned, are just showing us these even more is that we shouldn't think about brain training as only helpful for brains that aren't working so great. We should think about brain training as something as something that's able to help people regardless of where their brain function is. And in that sense, it's exactly like exercise, right? We don't say you should only exercise if you're, you know, been sitting on the couch and you're fat and you have high, you know, you have high cholesterol. Um, that's, that's of course, good for you if you're in that condition. But in fact, all of us should exercise, right? People who are in moderate physical condition should exercise. And in fact, people like Tom Brady, who are in peak physical condition, also exercise. No matter where you are in your physical health, physical exercise can help improve your health. And what the science is showing us more and more is the same thing is true for the right kinds of brain training programs. No matter where you are in your brain health, right? Maybe you're 82 and you've started to notice that words don't come as easily. Maybe you're 16 and you were diagnosed with autism. And so certain kinds of memory and attention are hard for you. Maybe you are uh, in the military. We work with special forces at SOCOM and you have a very high performing brain and you need your brain to be even more high performing to do the world's most difficult job. What the science is showing us is that wherever your brain health is, if you do the right kind of brain training exercises, you can make a better, sharper brain. Just like no matter where your physical health is, if you do the right kind of physical training exercises, you can build a sharper, healthier body. Yeah, it certainly doesn't hurt to do things like Sudoku or Wordle or crossword puzzles, I suppose. But this is different, right? You're absolutely right. It doesn't hurt. And I enjoy doing Wordle myself. My wife and I do it just about every day. It's a fun thing to talk about after dinner. Um, but games like crossword puzzles and Sudoku and Wordle, they really haven't been shown to reliably improve anyone's cognitive performance. And in fact, what the data really shows us is that although people who do those generally have higher cognitive performance, over time, their cognitive performance declines at exactly the same rate as people who don't do those kinds of uh, word games. And all that really tells us then is it doesn't really change how your brain is doing. It's just that people who have better cognitive function like games like that. So that's nice, but we're not really changing our fate. And, and why don't those games work? I mean, it seems like they're keeping your brain busy, right? I don't know. Do you do Wordle? You spend a long time thinking about five letter words probably, right? But here's the thing with Wordle and crossword puzzles and Sudoku. Even though it feels like you're the gears, right, are churning inside your brain, right? The gerbils are running as fast as they can trying to figure out that five letter word. Even though that feels like it's happening, your brain actually isn't really doing that much, right? It doesn't require you to operate quickly. It doesn't require your brain to operate accurately. It doesn't require your brain to, to operate under high degrees of cognitive load. And it's making your brain faster and more accurate that really change your underlying brain health and improve brain health and cognitive function. So Wordle and crossword puzzles are great. If you do them, love them. I'm not going to tell you not to do them, but I wouldn't want anyone to walk away thinking like, hey, that's enough to keep my brain healthy. It's, it's sadly, it really isn't. We, we need to be doing things that have more science behind them and have been shown to work like, well, frankly, Brain HQ. And tell us how that works with the app. There is a subscription model, but people can get started for free. 
Yeah, anyone can get started for free. You can go to world www.brainhq.com. Just register, no credit card required. You know, it's going to give you one free exercise per day. You can try it out, see if you like it, see if it's right for you, seeing if you make progress. And when you do these exercises, um, you know, it's not like studying for the SAT. We're not giving you tips and tricks about how to remember things better. You're going to be seeing things on the screen. You're going to be hearing things in the in, in you know sounds in your ears. And all of what you're doing is designed to make your brain information processing faster and more accurate. We're literally trying to speed up the neural information processing inside of your head because speeding up that neural information processing, make it more accurate. That's what gives you a, a sharper, better brain in everyday life, whether you're out, out for a drive, whether you're out trying to catch a game winning touchdown, or whether you're just trying to remember everything that your spouse told you to get at the store. Um, that's the kind of brain training that really helps uh, improve cognitive abilities in that way. More info is at brainhq.com. Dr. Henry Monka, thank you so much for spending time with us. Brett, it's always a pleasure. Thanks for having me on.